Okay, this game really makes me feel like a terrible person. A celebrity who's more than willing to be in a video game about him just being a criminal and killing anyone who gets in his way so he can get money is pretty messed up. And yes, I know that he actually got shot like nine times in real life, but why would you choose to do something like this? Regardless, the thing that makes me feel like a terrible person is that I actually really enjoyed this game. It's not terrific, but it's a hell of a lot better than I expected it to be. This is 50 Cent Blood in the Sand for the Xbox 360. Fifty Cent Blood in the Sand starts off with Fifty finishing up a rap concert, then going backstage with a shotgun and pointing it at a dude's face, demanding ten million dollars. Yep, just the image you want to give people about yourself. The money. It was stolen. What? By who? Men working for a gangster named Said Kamal. Wasted. Please, please, I tried to stop them. Wrong motherfucking ass. But anyway, then they're ambushed while in a Humvee. Their jeweled skull gets stolen, and everyone starts shooting. You're accompanied by one of the members of G-Unit as you make your way from building to building and try to get your money back. The story is pretty dumb, but the way the game presents dialogue also really makes you question the developers. You want to feel a little bit like a good guy in a video game. That's not the case here. I've never played a game before where I hated the protagonist this much, and it's a real person. Now, while the story is pretty messed up, I did say that I actually liked the game, and that's because the shooting mechanics are excellent. The controls are smooth, aiming is simple, and everything has a nice arcade feel to it. For example, you get extra points for being out in the open to kill an enemy, or taking out a shotgun-wielding enemy. Opposing AI isn't great, but they take cover when not shooting, and the different weapons available to use all feel like they have their place. Hit detection is also really good, although you don't seem to get any bonus for headshots. I don't understand why this is, but it's really not that big of a deal. Now the driving in Blood in the Sand is not nearly as good as the shooting. You feel like your tires are made from melting ice. Every small turn sends you sliding, and it can get pretty hard to control, but the sections don't even really feel needed. I'd much rather watch a cutscene for these than have to play with the driving mechanics. There's a jump! As you're playing with an ally most of the time, you'll also be able to open doors and do certain other actions with his help. These don't really feel necessary, but they work well enough for it to not really matter. Visually, Blood in the Sand is a very mixed bag. Cutscenes look phenomenal, with terrific details on faces and bodies, but environments during gameplay are very primitive looking. Texture pop doesn't occur that often, but when it does, it can get pretty bad. As you'd expect, music is excellent, and voice acting is also solid, for the most part. There are occasionally some hilariously bad performances. Hey, you hear that? Watch yourself. Hey, yo, get in the cover! Get in the cover! After Bulletproof got such terrible reviews, I really expected to hate Blood in the Sand, but I didn't. While I did hate the story and tone of the game, the actual gameplay was impressive, and the arcade style made it even better. This could be fun to rent for a weekend. They just laying out the red carpet. 